Welcome to Post to Post. This is our post SmackDown, the very first live SmackDown. Yeah, if you don't count the draft, I guess you could call it. Uh, welcome. I am the Rob from 1061 Kiss FM here with my tag team partner in podcasting, Mr. Jerry Valeri. Welcome back to the show, Jerry. Hey, yo. Good to be here. Where are you broadcasting from today? Uh, well, Viperville. It's going to be Viperville till SummerSlam, I think. Okay. That's what Randy, Randy Orton sent me an email and. And he said, if you could mention Viperville <laughs> so much that it makes everyone around you sick to their stomach, uh, that'd be great. If you could shove a catchphrase down their throat, <laughs> we'd, we'd really appreciate it over here uh, at Viperville. So, uh, <laughs> you're, you're right. Suplex City was so natural, and Viperville feels so forced. Viperville was a funny quip on Battleground. When he said it to Jericho, it was funny. That was great. Nobody really chanted it. Nobody really cheered it. It was, you know, and, and you let it go. And if it ever is going to happen again, it's got to happen from someone else. It can't be you delivering the same line to a different person. It, it just, when Brock Lesnar said Suplex City to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, the next night that place was filled with Suplex City chants yeah. and signs. It was natural. I, I don't like any of that shoving it down your throat stuff. Sure, absolutely. No, I think you're right. The, the most the the best ones are the natural ones, like Austin three sixteen. They didn't plan on that to be the t shirt. It just it just happened. I didn't realize until SmackDown last night how much I enjoyed Randy Orton's shoulder injury. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So let's talk about SmackDown. This was uh, the first SmackDown of the new era. Uh, the first one since the live draft, the first regularly scheduled SmackDown on a Tuesday. Uh, I do have to mention, I I hate watching wrestling on a Tuesday. You just gave me three hours on Sunday, three hours plus on the pay-per-view with the pre-show with, and then also ran over. And then you gave me three hours plus on Monday that I had to watch. And I'm just worn out. I don't want to watch wrestling on a Tuesday, but I was. I don't know if I'm going to continue to watch wrestling on a Tuesday, but uh, this week I thought for the sake of the podcast I would. And uh, so what do you, does Tuesday bother you? It does in the summer. I think in the winter it won't bother me at all. I'm on the East Coast. So it's, you know, it's, it's eight o'clock for me and that's okay. But it's still the sun was out and the kids were playing in the backyard. And, and so like, I didn't want to go in and I didn't want to, I didn't want to watch wrestling. So thank God for DVR because I'd never watch it live. I do. I do wish there were a way that they could have it still on Thursday. And I bet you if they tried really hard, they could. They always said their house show schedule was what gummed that up, I guess. What, whatever. I can't stand it. That's going to be a big barrier of entry for me to continue to watch SmackDown. The other barrier of entry for me is the incredible low quality that they offered us last night. Holy cow. You know, Raw comes out, and we talked about it yesterday. For better or worse, you have a new set a new feel, uh, the, the announcers aren't at ringside anymore, uh, new logo, new, new everything. It just feels fresh. And SmackDown Live, while it has new apron stuff and it's got a new logo and a new intro, their new set is Raw's old set. They said they weren't <laughs> going to notice this. Yes. Um, the logo is not impressive. The set is not impressive. And when you compare it to Raw's old set, which is it literally the same set? I guess I didn't pay enough attention. It's the same set. How are we not to view you as the little brother when you're wearing the hand me down? <laughs> you're you're exactly right. You're exactly right when you say that. It's going to be viewed as the B show, and uh, the way the draft went made it very clear that this is this is Raw's little brother. Oh, big time. Big you know. Time. So um, the show got off to a very poor start. I felt like um, Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan weren't particularly electrifying, uh, not even as much as as Mick and Stephanie were the night before. And then to continue along with this little brother hand-me-down uh, train of thought that we're on, um, they did pretty much the same start of the show as Raw did. Yeah, it was, just, it was the same. And I get you have to have an origin story. You need to establish... Uh, but they don't have to establish a champion. You know, they could have done it differently. Yeah, uh, having a, having a battle royal, I thought that was pretty cool to uh, to add to the to the six pack challenge or whatever. But as we kept inching closer and closer to Kane winning, I was ready to turn my TV off and never turn it back on again. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, Kane is always there to ruin stuff like that, but he didn't. Came close, closer than I want. <laughs> and there's there's one moment that really summed up SmackDown for me. Um, 
where Zack Ryder jumps off the top rope to deliver an elbow, but he just lands on his feet, and then he lays down on top of Apollo Crews and starts to punch him. I saw a gif <laughs> about that from Botchamania on Facebook this morning, and it really was funny because I missed it live. I missed it live because I can't pay attention for this long. Like, And I know it's at the beginning of the show, but like, I'm... I don't. When there's a battle royal going on, I you know I I'm gonna I'm gonna open up my phone. I'm gonna I'm gonna catch Pokemon. I'm gonna look at Facebook. You know I, I gotta I can't you can't keep me for 15 hours every weekend expecting not to to get distracted a little bit. And you're not gonna even you're not gonna convince me to watch it by even fooling me into thinking that the VOD villains, the Ascension. Eric Rowan or even Mojo Rawley or Zack Ryder are going to win this six pack battle royal. Like I looked at it and I said, okay, so it's either going to be Cruz or Alberto Del Rio. That's or maybe Kane. <laughs> it, you, you know, like the 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 whole thing. I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't like it. And then you go into the the women's match next: Becky Lynch and Natalia. And I like them both. I just. I was bored for a very long time during that show. Yeah, I will say, I, after the night before, I did think actually that Mojo Rowley had a chance to win the Battle Royal, but uh, obviously that did not happen. Let's move on to the women's match because I thought that uh, was not a very good example of the women's division. And the more women they kept trotting out, while it reminded us that they do have women, you remind us that you have awful, awful women. And Terrible. when the more that they talked... Uh, I don't know if this was by design, but the the person working the music was trampling over them like crazy. And I don't know if it was meant to be interruptive, but it sounded so sloppy to me. Did you get that impression? Yeah, well, they, they were trying. I think that's what they were going for. Each person was getting cut off by the next person's entrance music, and it was just like. And it just kept getting progressively worse. Yeah. Like, they just get, well, like, if you think you suck, well, watch out, because now I'm even suckier. And then it just kept going. <laughs> those are uh, what I, I hate. Even when guys do it, I hate when there's those promo fests, when they're organized, you talk, then I talk, then you talk, then I talk. Like, that drives me crazy when there's a, when there's a red light, green light kind of promo fashion. I'm just thankful that it gives me, it's going to give me something on SmackDown that I can fast forward through. <laughs> well, there is that. Uh, my next note simply says this is not a good show. <laughs> um, <laughs> the note after that, there was a, well, there, oh, I did, I did not mention, I was excited to see there was a promo for Shelton Benjamin returning. That's cool. I, I think, you know, that and Rhino showing up, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. They're, they're supplementing their bad draft with some pretty exciting veterans, and that's, that's good for me. I hope that they come in and do what they're supposed to do. Shelton Benjamin, I think, could actually be a champion on the show. Rhino, he had better push people. Yeah, that's. but he's. Ha I mean, I've seen him on NXT doing that, and I, I don't think he'll have a problem doing that. Where I think that a problem could arise is other names that I've seen floating around as far as uh, for potential returns. Like, okay, so uh, I'll, there was a... Like, the 2006 era of wrestling I just thought was abysmal. And I yeah. hear that they're talking to people like MVP... Um, I don't, no. I don't want him back. I don't want Carlito back. No, I know. I was never a Carlito fan. I don't want Mr. Kennedy back. I do Kennedy. want, I do want Kurt Angle back and I'm totally cool with Shelton Benjamin being back. Yeah. I'm cool with Benjamin. I'd be awesome with Kurt Angle coming back. Yeah. yeah. I doubt it still. I still don't think it's going to happen, but I'm still holding out hope it's possible. It'd be good. I, I thought Ms. TV was awful for a lot of reasons. Miz came out, and if you remember, he, he basically did the same Miz TV that Chris Jericho yeah. did a month ago. Right. Chris oh, Jericho, I, thought you, I actually thought you were going to say the two nights, two nights ago well, at Sunday. He, well, before Randy Orton comes out, he does a, he does a highlight reel where, where Jericho came out and said, I've got the best highlight reel you're ever going to see. I'm talking to the best superstar on the roster. Blah, 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 blah. It's me. <laughs> and then he proceeds to, you know, interview himself for a minute. And then Dean Ambrose came out, and that started, out, that started the Jericho-Ambrose feud. Yeah. Miz did the same thing exactly. Put worse, though, a worse version. Randy Orton then comes out and does the same interview he did with Jericho, mm -hmm. pretty much shoving Viperville down my throat and you know this one ended with a match that I could care less about uh, just whatever yeah um I agree that uh I I kind of I started to fade during that promo too at least that one led to a match though I, I was kind of excited to see Orton back in action because I think that's where he's best it's never been his character 
or even his promos for me, all those yeah. promos are, they're kind of electric here lately. At least they're cutting edge. They're kind of scathing. You know, he's, he's tagging people like Lesnar with his enhancement line and, you know, yeah, he's he, a little shooty. He, yeah, exactly. But that's okay with me. It's not in a lame way. Um, yeah. before, before I got to that though, I did make a note about American alpha. I'm very excited about them being on SmackDown and, uh, I, they saw, I saw a promo for them, but my thought was, why were they not on the show tonight? I felt like tonight would have been a really good night for them to be there. Well, they couldn't fit them in because they were too busy bringing out eight women no one cared about. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so I would have rewritten that. And, like, I don't know, like, that that women's segment before, I believe, went to multiple commercial breaks. Like, that could you could trim some of the fat there. Will SmackDown have its own women's belt and tag team belt or no? <sighs> I don't know How the do you- answer to that. I would. Like, what are they fighting for? I would have said no easily until they trotted out all those divas last night, and I say divas because those weren't women wrestlers. <laughs> so, Becky Lynch and the and the rest of the divas. Yeah, I mean Eva Marie is is a is a diva. She's not a she's not a woman wrestler. She's a valet. What did you think about um, David Otunga? My note is that he's he's not good. He, there's worse, but like I'd rather have Otunga than Booker T or Taz. But he's maybe I'm not used to him yet. But I I didn't appreciate his commentary. I didn't like I didn't even know he was there for the first forty minutes, and then and then when he's when I realized there's another guy there besides uh, JBL and the one guy that I do like the the ham super hammy guy who's that guy? Mauro oh, Ren- Ronaldo. Yeah, Mauro Mar- Ronaldo. I I thought I'd hate him because he's so heavy handed <laughs> with the way that he talks, but I like him. He's okay. I I like him more in uh, CWC, uh, where it's it's less storyline telling and less less um, enthusiasm and passion involved, and more straight reporting uh, like announcing. I think he's better at that stuff. But I don't I don't dislike him either. He's better than my mortal enemy, Rich Brennan. That guy was a total turd. Jerry actually had a, a nice feud with Rich Brennan, which we should talk about in a future episode because uh, I do want to spend some more time uh, exposing you to people as far as, you know, because I think uh, a lot of people get passionate about post to post, and I love that. A lot of people here in Evansville especially watch uh, watch these videos every single time we post one. I love you guys. So um, Jerry did have a blood feud with yeah. WWE NXT commentator... Rich Brennan. That and, son of a gun blocked me on Twitter. We'll get into that one time. Yeah, we'll get more into that next week. Is there anything else you want to mention from SmackDown, Jerry? Uh, I hate Dolph Ziggler, and I know that I'm alone. I, I, understand. Shouldn't. I, I shouldn't hate Dolph Ziggler, but I do. I don't like his look. I, I, I appreciate his in-ring uh, ability. His promos annoy me. His, his entrance theme annoys me. The fact that he's the one fighting for the championship and not – Someone that I think would have been better in that spot. I I would have picked um, I would have picked Bray Wyatt. And I know we've seen Bray and Dean, but I think Bray Wyatt should be the champion of that show. I, I would have really liked to see that. Or AJ Styles is the obvious choice. They give it to Dolph Ziggler. I I get it. People like it. I don't. Dolph is an interesting choice, and I agree. Probably not the right choice. Although. He may become our, our polarizing figure because I'm still crazy about him. I think he's still very talented, just underutilized in a, in a way that's not his fault. Well, then maybe that underutilization is what's keeping me from appreciating him, and hopefully I'll begin to. But right now, I'm just like, please, God, could you go away? Okay. Well, we'll talk more about this as SmackDown continues to get us closer to SummerSlam. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be watching this show weekly. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be watching it on Tuesday nights, though. I may DVR it and watch it throughout the week. But uh, I don't know what our schedule is going to be like next week. It's just so crazy. But I, I don't think we have to watch it. I think we can lie to everybody and say that we watched it. <laughs> All we have to do is come on and be like, saw SmackDown last night. Whew, that still sucks. And then just move on to something else. And people will just believe we watched it. But I will always watch on a Monday night. I know you will, too. And we'll always come back with an episode on Tuesday to let you know what we thought about uh, Monday's show. Uh, for myself, my tag team partner, Jerry Valeri, broadcasting live from State College, Pennsylvania. Thanks so much for being on the show, Jer. It is a pleasure, Rob. I hope we get to do it next week. And, uh, yes, we will be back with some more episodes for you next week here on Post to Post.